So please note, um, this is our disclaimer. Uh, there will be four looking statements. Uh, you will be having access to this presentation afterwards. So please do read this. So Grafano, um, we have three uh, main value propositions. Uh, the first one is great infrastructure, meaning that we are in a very good location. Uh, if you look at many of the projects uh, in Canada, uh, whether it's graphite, lithium, rare earth, or other critical materials, many of these projects, the mining projects, are in northern areas with very uh, poor infrastructure, requiring tens of millions of dollars uh, sometimes over $100 million to, to build a road and uh, tens of millions of dollars more to build um, energy infrastructure. That's not the case for our properties. They are in locations uh, which are near towns um, and um, they are essentially, uh, we could see them to some extent as brownfields uh, where they were mined previously and the uh, small mining towns would develop around them. And, uh, and so there is quite significant uh, infrastructure. We have power crossing our, our um, properties and they are adjacent to a very good roads. So great infrastructure. Uh, we also focus uh, on near-term production. As I said, um, our properties have uh, previous producers as well as new opportunities to explore uh, for additional uh, resources. And we have a great upside. So we listed late in 2021, this is less than two years. We are still a micro cap um, and we're looking to define a resource. We are still pre-resource, but we believe that once we establish that, uh, we will have significant upside and I will explain why. So a little bit about graphite. Uh, has high melting points, is a good conductor, is used uh, for batteries, and is soft and uh, is a slip, a slip in material as well, so is used as a dry lubricant. And China is uh, a major producer of uh, natural graphite, as well as synthetic graphite. And as we know, because of the EV projections, uh, demand for, for EVs, uh, there is a significant uh, projections for demand for, um, for, for graphite as well as lithium. So as you know, graphite is used uh, in the anode and lithium is used in the cathode of the batteries. And uh, so in last year, about 1.3 million tons of uh, graphite was produced around the world. As I said, uh, China produced uh, most of it. But um, the projections are that in the next 10 years or so, we have to um, you know, reach about 5 million tons of production. And even at that time, it is probably very difficult for China to continue supplying 65% or more than 65% uh, of all the graphite in the world to the rest of the world and for its own consumption. So it will be very good for us to continue developing projects around the world as well. So our main project is called Lac Obolio, and it is in Quebec, uh, a province which is recognized by many as a very strong mining uh, jurisdiction. And um, that's where we have uh, our claims. And they are represented in red, um, as you can see there, and is adjacent to the only North American mine. It's, uh, it's owned now by uh, Northern Graphite, and uh, they're still producing and is the only uh, really source of, uh, of graphite today between, North, between Canada and, and the United States. And so what we want to do is to bring additional production. So we are clearly in a district where um, there is production, there has been production. There is a historical mine down here with a, 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 a small resource, but a significant one. Um, and um, and we are looking to add more. So the historical resource is about 1.45 million tons at uh, 8%, which has to be upgraded. This is a non-compliant. And so we are working right now to, to make it uh, compliant. The other important information is that the historical mine uh, that is here, and as I said, is owned by another company. 
uh, called Northern Graphite. They have disclosed that they have less than two years, now less than two years um, mine production. And, um, and in, that, in that situation, <clears throat> we are obviously a very good potential source for them. But uh, we are moving forward with our own plans. We have this uh, site and we have additional sites as well. And we can, with historical mine, also be able to, and we also have a historical mill uh, in, in our property to develop our own project independently or with them. So here it shows more closely uh, our property and the various zones. So we did um, the various target zones. We did the geophysics and, and it shows that there are different areas where uh, a graphite uh, deposit can be found. And we already drilled zone four um, as well as uh, zone you know, the zone three as well, but it's not really showing here. And um, down here is the historical graphite resource, which we uh, also drilled um, uh, again, and uh, and zone one. From all these uh, different tests, so this is zone one, you can see characteristic of this area is uh, relatively five to two to 10 or 15 meters uh, um, thick intersections is what is found even in the historical mine with relatively high grades. And this is exactly what we are also uh, seeing. Uh, some examples are, for instance, um, the first point where we got 6.34% um, graffiti carbon over 11 meters. Um, so which is really good, you know, for the type of deposit in that area. Other deposits might have uh, much longer intersections, but it, they tend to be significantly lower grade as well. So this is uh, results from zone three um, and zone four. Again, you could see consistently relatively high grades of six, 11%, 9% in a variety of, uh, of meters, anywhere from five to 11 or 14 meters in, 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 some, in some cases. So this is very good. And as I said, uh, it's very representative uh, of the area where we are, uh, where is basically the mineralization happens in foldings. And so and then you see various intersections when you drill, we intersect uh, 10 to 11, 5 to 11 uh, meters long high grade uh, material. Um, we have another uh, project, which is called Standard Mine Project. Again, is a historical mine. There was previously production for a couple of years and it shut down because prices of graphite were down. And um, <clears throat> we have done uh, geophysics and, and we were able to see anomalies extending 500 meters and 600 meters in length uh, throughout the historical graphite mine surface workings. Um, and then we actually uh, also drilled and uh, we observe, again, very good um, results, relatively high grades. Uh, examples are, for instance, 14 meters, 5.79% uh, grade, um, and 20% meters at 5% grade, and so forth. So that is um, really good, and we're very excited that we will be able to um, also establish a resource out of our second uh, historical uh, mine. So we have more uh, claims that we have established. All of these claims are uh, very close to Lac Obulio, uh, five to 10 kilometers. As I said, there's a historical mill there. Once we establish a resource, we can um, you know, bring that, potentially refurbish again that mill and, uh, and have our own uh, processing facilities. Alternatively, we can uh, combine ourselves potentially with our neighbors and permitting in that case could be as short as six months. So we could be as short as six months to production, um, but given that uh, we are close to production, we are likely to be able to reach production even our, in our own perhaps maximum two years from having um, a resource, a compliant resource, and provided that uh, we have the funding to, uh, to, to advance. This is in a country like Canada where a lot of the permitting uh, happens within five to seven years or so, sometimes more. So although we just uh, came uh, to, to the market because we have these historical um, you know, mines, very close to infrastructure with all the, what we need, we don't need to 
you know, uh, build roads and, and things like that, because it's all really right there. Um, you know, we should be able to have very low capex uh, for, for product to production, uh, relatively low, low cost, use uh, clean energy because Quebec um, has hydropower and, um, and, and, and reach production relatively easy once we find a resource. Again, this is the significant upside for investors um, because we are pre-resource uh, and we just got listed recently, but uh, all the results, the drilling results to date are, are showing us that, that th those historical resources are there. So the, the management team is very strong. It's myself, I, I'm uh, technically strong, uh, you know, like looking at metallurgy, uh, physicist by, tra by trade. Uh, Jay Richardson, Richard, Richardson <laughs> he is our CFO, many years also of experience as a CFO. Nathan and Martin, uh, they are market people. They uh, help us to, to, with the funding. And then our technical person or the most technical person on the board in this case is Roger. Dan is a director, many years, uh, 30 years uh, as a geologist, very good at structural uh, geology. And, uh, and he's been very helpful for the type of geology that, that you find in our graphite deposit. So finally, going forward, this is what we're looking at doing. So this year we are continuing to drill. We are doing infield and expansion drilling. And uh, we think early next year, we should be able to establish finally a resource. We also already started doing metallurgical work. You can see our press releases uh, to prove uh, what we saw before, uh, previously, uh, at least a 96% um, grade from flotation. Also very large, relatively large uh, flake uh, and very good distribution, medium and large, making a significant percentage of it. So next year, uh, resource estimation will change the company and the valuation of the company. Uh, we should be able to build a pilot plant and complete at least a preliminary economic assessment. And then quickly uh, go into a feasibility study and try to reach production as fast as possible, either alone uh, within very record times, um, permitting times, um, or in combination uh, with the producing company, uh, perhaps even faster um, using a quarter method. So all these are possibilities for us. Uh, offering significant upside uh, to investors. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to our story. Again, Grafano Energy in Quebec, Canada. Uh, my name is Luisa Moreno. I'll take questions now. Luisa, yes. So we are, have a few questions we collected from the investors the last few days. And also we have uh, one question from live too. And this one question here is asking you about uh, are there any other, uh, how do you compare your projects in other uh, similar or graphic projects in Quebec in the area? How do, how do you compare them? Right. So the only one that we can really compare is the, the producing one uh, in terms of the way uh, the structure of the graphite happens. It's, it's like in lenses, like I said, very high grade lenses, five to 10, 20 meters in some cases. Um, and, uh, and they were... Uh, in production for 30 years. All the other ones tend to be uh, relatively uh, lower grade, uh, sometimes um, longer intersections, like 100 meters and things like that. So there is another company, for instance, I guess the most advanced in, in Canada is called Nouveau Monde. Is, you know, they would have uh, larger intersections, but I believe the average grade in a, is about 2.5 or 3% around, around that. Uh, but again, unfortunately for them, uh, they are in isolated areas with, uh, you know, uh, other community issues. Great. And this is another question from the investor. You're uh, talking about your share price uh, have a bit of a drop uh, in the beginning of the year since any particular reasons why or just the macro market? It's really the market. So the to be fair, it is significantly overpriced. Uh, we, you know, we have more cash uh, in our treasury than than the value of, of the company and so but if you put all the canadian graphite companies side by side you'll see that um, most of them have fallen more than 50 percent 60 percent so we follow the same trend unfortunately um and uh, but we think once um, we believe strongly that once uh, the market recovers uh, we should recover as well and we will cover even more once we are able to prove a, a resource I'm pretty confident of that. 
So this is a question from another investor. What 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 do you think in general the graphite market is it being undervalued as a whole compared to let's say lithium in the similar case uh, scenario is is graphite really sort of fall under the radar in general? Yes, I think that uh, lithium has taken all the oxygen uh, out of the air, right? <laughs> so <laughs> you know you know it's these are not pure lithium you know, uh, batteries, you know, in the cathode, you have nickel, you have, uh, you have manganese, in some cases you have aluminum, uh, definitely cobalt is, is still used in some cases. And in the anode, you, you, do, you do have the graphite right now, right? So it's very important. And I think quietly, some companies like Tesla and others are uh, securing offtakes uh, with uh, the more advanced players. But, uh, you know, they are in a very comfortable position. People have not panicked about graphite yet. Um, but uh, definitely, it's, it's, it, it is uh, not getting the same attention, but things are likely to change. Benchmark and other uh, research companies uh, keep saying that uh, the day for, for graphite is coming. Great. There's one last question from another investor asking about your capital. So... Who would like to know who, who are your major shareholders right now? And do you have a need for raising any the capital anytime soon? Because you have quite a few uh, milestones that uh, in the next uh, 18 months you want to achieve. Right. So we are a pre-resource company. And yes, of course, uh, we will need to, to raise uh, more, more money. Uh, but the good news is that uh, we do have sufficient cash and we're going to be drilling with the cash that we have. We will not be. We, we we have no intention of raising money at at, at, at ten cents, you know, because our IPO is at thirty. Uh, so we will wait. There is interest. We have seen interest from uh, Quebec funds and others. Uh, so we received quite a lot of interest, but we're not going to raise money at these levels. We can. We will wait uh, until market recovers, but eventually we we will. So this is a great opportunity uh, for investors to get in in the market. And uh, and buy right now because things are going to change uh, soon. We are pretty confident of that. Thank you, Louisa, for your time and sharing your story and answering all the questions uh, for us. And for a reminder for all the interested uh, investor parties, if you would like to have a follow up uh, discussions with any of the companies like uh, Ravano Energy, please contact us later after the show to arrange. Again, thank you for your time here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.